like you, bro. Like we end up with each other, bro. I didn't see you three, four places, didn't even know who you was. You yeah. feel me? Mm -hmm. You know, just just good energy, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying. All right, what's going on, y'all? We back with another interview today. We with Mr. Let the Band Play. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna mess it up two times in a row, bro. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you see? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The <laughs> last time. The first time I had met him, you know, he was like, no, 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 no. It's let the band play. What right? I tell you, exactly, it's exactly <laughs> so what I told. I was ready this time, man. You know, we in Miami today with it. Um, oh, sure. We met up for the first time back in New York earlier this year, and I'm super excited to be able to finally do a long format interview for y'all and give you guys some longer content. So yeah. make sure you guys enjoy this one, man. All the other Paper Route members, we got an interview, a short interview with Glock, uh, Spencer, a long one with Fizzle, and a long one with Kenny and his Maybach truck. So y'all check out all the content that we have already. And in the middle of this video, I'm gonna add in some other people that are interested in being a part of what I got going on. So sponsors or people a part of that and other businesses, creators trying to grow. So, you know, hit me up on my Instagram and I'll go ahead and give you a shout out in my interviews whenever we do that but besides that let's get into the one today man band for play sure. how you feeling today man i'm good man <laughs> we same old stuff in miami in my a.o you yeah, know cooking up working yep. you feel me same old same old yep yep so you know you're on a little little weekend trip you know coming out here to cook sure. up man working on some projects sure. um what's some stuff you got coming up right now that you're working on man a whole lot of stuff man um of course glock he always working on something mm -hmm. you feel me I've been working with a newer artist, Big X the Plug from yeah. Texas, man. We we got two records out. It's been going crazy. So I'm really excited for like what what he got coming or whatever. He on tour right now with Kevin Gates. So okay. Okay. He's opening up for him? Yeah. That's yeah, what's up. Yeah, How many cities so, they got? You know, I think he on the whole tour. Really? Yeah. Damn, yeah, that's he good. on the whole tour, so. Yeah, it's good to like have them records releasing like in the mix. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Doing all that. So, <clears throat> and outside of that, you know, we still working on... Uh, Another installment for Big Scar, you feel okay. me? So that's, that'll be his second posthumous album, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, and that's yeah. later this year. We probably year? really, I don't know if it's gonna be the second album or we gonna like extend the first one. Okay, deluxe. You feel me? So I don't really necessarily know what his label exactly is gonna do, but I know we 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 done working on that motherfucker yeah. though for sure. Okay. Um, yeah. You you and Big X, you mentioned him first. Uh, you got the Whip It song going crazy right so, now. I've been seeing you share that a lot. Yeah. And um, we, I was working on that track with him. Man, really, man, it was just dope, man. Like, so Whippy, like, it was just one of them beats that, like, I had just made on just some flipping a sample type shit. So mm -hmm. I had already had that beat probably about two, three years already, bro. Really? I had made that beat a minute ago. But I just never got with the right artists. It just, like, boom, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So, like, you know, when somebody asked for beats, I always just send them. I used to send them straight to the text or email or whatever. And that was just happened to be one of the ones I sent. <laughs> and he rolled that motherfucker perfectly. So it was just, like... Boom, you feel me? Yeah, and it started and going I, crazy. And I, and I and I really yeah, hell yeah. And I really felt like at the time I sent it to him, I just felt like I could hear him on it. Mm -hmm. So it just it just went per perfectly, you feel what I'm saying? Yep, so yep. yeah. That's what's up. That's good. You know, um, you guys are building a good relationship working with each other. Yeah, and yeah. um he was on like towards the end of the Glaucoma tour this yeah. year, right? Yeah, he yeah. did all the Texas dates considering he's from Texas yep. and shit, so you working with any, any other artists from Texas? Yeah, yeah, I, like, I had bumped into a, bump, a bunch of different artists. I got another, another single out right now with Yellow Beezy. Okay. It's called Ha Ha or whatever. I got one out with him. Uh, I done work with Megan, of course, yep, yep. being from Texas. Tay Money, she mm -hmm. from Dallas. That's actually one of my topics I had for um, today's interview. You know, you are not afraid to work outside of your group when yeah. it comes to artists. And you have a lot of records, like you said. I have um, some on the list, Kodak. Lil Double O sure. from Memphis as well, sure. and Meg The Stallion, all those going crazy. Mm -hmm. um, what was it like being able to work with other artists outside of Paper Route? I mean, it's dope, bro. It's just a good opportunity just to be able to just spread mm -hmm. spread myself, but without spreading myself too thin, you yeah. feel me? It's still exclusive, but it's still being able to reach out and get somebody their band play sound, you feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Cause yeah, <laughs> is it that, is it them usually reaching out to you, or is it you just sending it out? Vice to, versa, you okay. feel me? If I feel like, man, yeah, that artist will sound good on my shit, or. You know, mm -hmm. I'm kind of like, I ain't going to say I'm picky because I let anybody rap on my beats, but I won't let just anybody <laughs> rap on my beats, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. If I, I feel like, if I, feel like I know, man, I think we'll make a good sound together. Then I'll try it at least, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a hard thing when it comes to being a producer and being able to 
pick out who you think would sound good with you because sure. some people do hand their beats out everywhere and then yeah but sometimes it comes out good sometimes it's like that's weird hearing them yeah on their beat, it know? do it all it'd be, it be weird sometimes <laughs> but you know it is what it is um we talked a little bit in new york for a short minute of starting off your career and you said that your brother was a big influence for you yeah when it comes to making beats so, so let's all um, get into that a little bit more so what yeah. was that like for you well like my brother chris king man he he like I don't really know what made him start making beats or whatever. I really think he he told me a story one time about our uncle that gave him a program, which was Fruity Loose one time. Mm -hmm. And I believe he was already trying to make beats on a keyboard and stuff like that at the time. So I think he tried it or whatever. And then he went back and went his own way and started making beats. But when I got old enough to be around my brother and start seeing what he was into and shit like that shit, I got intrigued by it, bro. Mm -hmm. So I instantly started doing the same shit, bro. And like, what for age real. was that again? I was probably like... When I first started, like, probably, like, about 13 or 14 years wow. old. Dang, so that's, yeah. like, middle school, maybe high Man, school, you know? Like, finna go to middle school yeah. type <laughs> shit. Well, yeah, in middle school, yeah, yeah. yeah. For sure, for sure. Dang, that's crazy. How much older is your brother than you? He's, uh, like, five years older than me. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Is he still making beats till this day? For or sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he, uh, he really, like, more so on, like, heavy on the R&B side. He, he got, like, a lot of R&B records out with, with artists and stuff like that. Okay. Such as Bryson Till and Jacquees. Okay. And what's but, his uh, um producer name? Chris King. Chris King? Okay. Yeah. I got to look out for that. I never yeah, knew yeah. that. Yeah, man. I didn't get to ask you what his, his producer name yeah, what he man. went by. Before. Yeah, man. That's, that's what he's been going by forever. Mm -hmm. um, you said one of the biggest influences he had, too, was being able to just, like, show you his craft as well. So exactly. that's, that's a really cool thing. Yeah, Especially yeah, coming like, from your older brother, it's, like, in the house. You yeah, guys live together, right? Exactly. Nah, we, like, that's the thing. We we never lived together. We grew, really? we grew up in different households and stuff like that. But, like, when we are, obviously, when we always got with each other, it was always love, brotherly love and shit. And when they showed me how to make beats, it just made me want to be around them more because he got another brother oh, or whatever okay. that, uh, that does music and make beats as well mm. or whatever. So, obviously, I just call him my brother, too. You feel <laughs> yeah, me? Yeah, so, yeah. I was just going over there, and they were showing me how they do their stuff. I'm paying attention, and it just, like, it was just a revolving door of the music. You that's feel crazy. me? So, so, three people all together, that's, yeah, that's yeah, a good network we, just to yeah, even start yeah, off with. Yeah, we were going crazy. We had a group called UFO. UFO? <laughs> This shit was funny as a fuck. <laughs> 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 hey, we had some heat though. I ain't gonna hold you, bro. UFO. Like the day was ready, bro. We UFO. was making the Who beats. Who was the first artist you worked with? with UFO. I never heard of this. Yeah, in my life. it was me and my brothers, man. For real, it was that was us. Really? That was the UFO. That was the group. I think it was. I think it's still for unique. It was unique, flying, outstanding, or some shit like that. Really? Hell yeah! You got a picture for that? <laughs> Man, it might, so well <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it might be so well Oh no, it might be so well alive, but that's current. They probably gonna be bad as hell. I told you about that. <laughs> Chris King, band play, and what's the third guy? Uh, Talent. Wow. Okay. Big Wow. So we gotta Billy check out Jump, UFO like, after this. I gotta see what yeah, that yeah. looks like in here some of the early um <laughs> work from that right there yeah yeah and what's so crazy we we still working you feel me like wow my other brother which is his brother or whatever mm -hmm. um he just did a collab with me for uh big x uh, a new song for big x so wow. he, we still working together and then chris king he did one scale with me for dog mm -hmm. so you know we still yep, you did mention that you know what yeah. i'm saying we still working and like this shit don't stop here yeah, it's in our bloodline that's man. crazy um how how old is the oldest one uh my nah my oldest brother Chris King he okay. you know yeah, what I'm saying well his oldest brother then oh uh, yeah 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 nah he younger than him actually really? you okay. feel me? but he younger he older than me okay so he in between <laughs> us you feel me I think bro I think bro probably like thirty eight now okay. you feel me how old are you my older brother, I'm thirty three thirty three okay yeah, yeah. dang you still everybody's still young yeah, so man. it goes in age you Fizzle and then Kenny and Glock yeah, are the same so. yeah Glock probably about the youngest around you really? feel me. Yeah, they're both twenty six. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's the youngest. He's like, yeah. I think he's my age. He's twenty, right? Yeah, something like that. Yep, yep. So we got to do something with him soon. I'll yeah, try yeah. to work on that as well. I'll have to talk. Um, well, uh, first beats we did discuss that a little bit. Do you remember the first, like, very first beat? What that was like, like trying to put it together on your computer? Man, trash. <laughs> you feel me? But I'm thinking it's hard, but. You know, I'm trying. I was trying at the time. So like, when you presented it to UFO, what did they say? Nah, it wasn't. They said that wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were telling me too. Like, and like, they was like always my worst critics at the time. You feel me? But, but it got I, you to where you are hell now. Hell yeah, bro. Yeah. You feel me? And to this day, whenever my brother say, hell yeah, bro, I like this, Jay. Uh-huh. You feel me? That's the oh, one. Yeah. Then I you know it's the one for hell real. Yeah, for sure. Okay. 
Because they're never scared. That's another thing. A lot of people will <laughs> be trying to get into whatever crafts they're doing, and then the people around them won't critique them in a good way. They'll just be saying it's hard when it's really not. So mm -hmm. then they put it out, and it's it's not it. Yeah, man. It just depends on what your ears want to hear at the time, man. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Um, A little bit into it. Once again, I'm going to keep referencing the New York interview from until yeah. I get through the topics we talked about then because we need good. to dive deep in. Um, we talked about the cook-up process for a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, let's go deeper into your cook-up process. So when you, you I seen you a little bit in here. Yeah. And you're like, that was probably towards the end of a beat. Mm -hmm. But from the start to finish, what are you usually doing? I mean, generally, just depend on how, like, it's like a mood type of thing. If I'm feeling like on some goes, I might start with the drums first one day. I might start with the melody. Just, or I might go, like, open some loops my producer sent me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Go start from there. Just depend on what I want to do and what my workflow is and who I'm, who I got in mind. I'm making beats for at the time. You feel me? Mm -hmm. yeah, do you have a yeah. usual list of people you like to go through to make sure you get them beats out weekly hell or nah, something? Yeah, nah. nah, I don't even flow. make beats every day like I used to, but whenever I do get in here, man, you might find me in the studio. I might be in there twelve hours at a time mm -hmm. by myself, just in a room like this, just going crazy. How much can me? you put out a day? You think? How many beats? Yeah. I mean, in a day, I done made about eight beats really? in a day, eight to nine. That's good. Like, in a weekend span, I probably didn't, I didn't went through about like 25 pieces. Really? For sure. Like, because I went back and listened to it, I was like, damn, I just made a nigga whole album. You feel me? And I had, for real, mm -hmm. all on them. Uh, whole albums, obviously, you know, and then I'm going to touch on the artists that you work with as well. But, mm -hmm. you know, you were obviously responsible for a lot of the Dumb and Dumber series mm -hmm. and all of Glock and Dolph's work. Mm -hmm. So what was it like being the main producer for the Dumb and Dumber project and, you know, hearing that shout out on the radio that I seen? Yeah. Every, the famous clip. Everybody Man, that shit was clip. lovely, bro. Like, it, it was just lovely, bro. It was, it was just life changing for me. You mm -hmm. feel me? Because coming into the situation, when Dolph asked me what I wanted out of, out of, out of this shit, just as far as music and out of everything, it's perspective or whatever. And I told him, bro, I said, I'm just trying to get with an artist. You feel me? And, and go up, bro. Mm -hmm. He go up with me, I go up with him. We mm -hmm. just going, you know what I'm saying? That's exactly what we <laughs> did, bro. You feel me? And what so, year was that? That you that had that was conversation? Two, that was 2019. Wow. That was the same year. That was, no, 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 no. That was actually 2018. Because mm -hmm. that next year was 2019 when we dropped Dumb and Dumb. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So you worked on it that whole year after that conversation? Man, a lot of them beats, bro. It was like newer beats. Probably like the the newest beat on that whole album, as far as Dumb and Dumb, was like the... Eel and one hell of a life, bro. Mm -hmm. All that other shit was like shit I, I've been having from like 2016, 2017, shit that I just been making prior to even knowing him. You wow. feel me? Like shit I just had on dick. So you, you know guys get in the session. Was it like um, a lot of my producer friends will be like, it's usually start the beat and then just click, like if they don't hear it instantly or is he listening to the full thing? or? Well, shit, at the time, like... So when I had first got signed with Paper Route, bro, I was just sending off because I had was just sitting on beats, bro. Mm -hmm. I, obviously, I can't do that now, but I just had folders. I was just sending them beats off, and I ain't know I ain't know who was rapping on it at the time. It could have been Glock Record, could have been uh, Kenny Fizzle, could have been a Dolph Record, and it was just just that it was just like that at the time or whatever. So when circle back around when they start playing me the shit back, I'm just paying more attention and they using all of my shit. So like when we working on Dumber Dumber. We was in uh, L.A. at the time at this mansion or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, like, they just playing me all the records. I'm just hearing everything. Everything ain't me. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I ain't hearing nothing different. Like, mm -hmm. it's just all my sound going around this shit. And I really never knew what he had planned for that album until it actually came out. When I went and listened to it and I, I seen I had all them beats on there with just back-to-back -back band play, that was lit. Right there at that time, I said, it's up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, was the listen the first original listening session of that where you were just like this is the one like you already knew? What's the craziest thing is I wasn't even there for the like the listening party or the listening session. Really? Like, cause the whole time that whole summer we was in L. A. working on it, and you know I had children, bro, so I had mm -hmm. to get back at the end of the summer to make sure they were straight or whatever. So when they was doing the release and the parties and shit, they was in L. A. While I was back in Tennessee taking care of my business and shit. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So when it came out, I just, you know, I had my own way. I, yeah. I, I parted in my own way. Yep, yeah, your own way with the kids yeah, and stuff. Tight shit. Okay, guys. So as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, we're going to be starting to promote people. Um, if you have a business, clothing brand, you're an artist, producer, any of that, and you want to be included into what I got going on, you want to be seen in the interview, 
you can let me know, hit me in the DMs and we can get that scheduled for you to be a part of whichever interview I got coming up. So first off, my clothing line De La Fe is gonna be dropping soon. I'll go ahead and show you guys a mock-up of what's gonna be dropping. I'm getting the first samples in later this week. It's gonna be a streetwear oversized t-shirt with um, a graphic on the front and then some wording on the back along with the designs and then two labels sewn on, one onto the shoulder and then one onto the inside of the back. So I'm really happy to launch that, man. It's fire, you know, I'm gonna be giving it to artists and stuff like that. So if you're an artist and you wanna rock my brand and you're seeing this, hit my DM, I can ship one out to you. Um, second of all, Bay 8, where we film this at, shout out to them in Miami, recording studio. I have a video tour of the whole studio dropping soon for the vlog from today. And then along with the cook-up session with band play. So stay tuned to see that coming up next. Real Wave Creators, which is a music group based out of Miami, Florida. We interviewed Wave, which is one of the boys from my hometown. And he's a producer doing his thing down in Miami at the studio, Mix Master Studio. And it's the number one recording studio and it's known for a strong engineering staff, hospitality, and prioritizing and communication and ensuring satisfaction. Um, artist of the week that we have, Devo Don't Cap A Lot. He's an upcoming Florida artist who we will be featuring on here soon and getting an interview with him later on this month, probably releasing sometime early to mid-November. So stay on the lookout for him and check out his music. He dropped a music video this week, which I liked a lot, and it's called Lavish Lifestyle. So you guys check that out. I checked it out and I think it's fire. And lastly will be Miami Street Music which is a media event space made to shine light on local talent in the local scene and also have expanded to the Orlando area, which they call Orlando street music, Puerto Rico street music, and have plans for expansion into hip hop space in the future. So these are all things to be on the lookout for. Like I said, if you guys want to be featured in my interviews, have a section where I promote your business, clothing, any of that, be sure to hit my DMs, comment on this video, whichever way, and I'll see it. Um, email me. All my contact information, everything is listed on my page as usual. And also I have a PO box that is active if one of you guys want to send me something to review in this part of the video. So make sure you cop my clothing line that's dropping. It'll be linked in the description and pre-orders are available now. And we're going to be running them for the first probably month or so. I might just leave them open depending on how many orders we get. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this week. You guys hit me up, be featured in this. And we're going to get back into the band play interview. Enjoy it. Um, obviously, you know, you always bring up your kids and um, being a dad. What's being a dad like and being in the music industry? Is it really hard for you or man, it's, being it's, back and forth towards album releases? I ain't, I ain't gonna say it's I ain't gonna say it's hard, bro. It's all up to you if you want to do it or not, really. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It ain't, it ain't really hard. I just I just know what my priorities is and I just take care of my business, bro. Mm -hmm. Plain and simple, because they mine, bro. Yep. I know. <laughs> like, you always got to the business. And you always, you always talk about your kids. Your kids always on the stories. You know all that, man. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know, I've seen one day like a while ago. I remember you were like, Billboard producer, but I'm still in the car rider line or something nah, like that. Nah, for real, for real. I'm talking that about I was, me, I, I was, I was in the car rider line, literally <laughs> falling asleep. That made me laugh. I was like, yeah, you <laughs> really, you really always with the kids, man. Thanks. Um. <laughs> Another topic, uh, your producers, you know, let's talk about street orchestra yeah. and what that is to you. Um, man, let's, go ahead, explain a little street bit. Street orchestra, people. man, it's my baby, man. Mm -hmm. Like, it's my first company that I started for myself, like, as far as LLC, LLC based and shit like that. Mm -hmm. So, and like, you know, it's been successful, mm -hmm. you feel me, as far as with producers, man, like, of course, I got a couple of producers or whatever from all different places, even international and stuff like that, man, and like I said, bro. And just keep going up, man. Mm -hmm. Like I, I love being able to help other people, obviously. And you know, as long as they got them believing me, I'm gonna believe in them just as hard, bro. I'm gonna go ten times harder, and you gonna go for yourself. For mm -hmm. Sure. How many artists you got on there right now? Um, I don't necessarily. Well, producer wise, it's five. Mm -hmm. it's five producers. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So. That's what's up, man. Street orchestra. So, oh, and I'm looking for some more though too. You are? I'm looking for hell yeah. From everywhere, right? <laughs> hell yeah, man. I can get I just, I'm ready to get up to about fifty producers if really? you can. Hell yeah. Hey. Why not? I didn't know that. Why not? I have one in every state. Why not? That's true. You That's feel true. Me? Why not? It's this it's marketing. Is that something that people me? do? Like they come up to you at a show or anything like that? They're yeah, like, yeah. A lot? I mean, in my DM shows, Twitter, mm -hmm. wherever. So what's the best you way for me? a producer to get at you if they want to be a part of street orchestra? Man, you got to be hard. Yeah. Like, it's, I don't know. You just, I don't know. How about I hear your shit? You got to be hard. Like, for instance, like, we was, uh, we was at a couple of shows when we was on tour with Glock. Mm -hmm. Producer see me and 
you see me on stage and throw me his flash jar. Really? You feel me? I instantly listen to that because you, <laughs> you feel me? Look, you went through this much to give me your flash jar. So, hell yeah. That's still happening. I at least check it out. Hell yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Man, I didn't know that. I came back off to about eight flash jars. Really? Yes. And who, what was the hardest one, you think, from what city? Oh. Um, if you remember. Man, I don't remember the you city. Know? I ain't going to front. I don't remember the city, though, but I do remember the, like, Fuck on the, with a couple of loops and shit like mm-hmm. that. You know what I'm saying? Then a lot of them is just send beats. Or yeah. Just you know what I'm saying? Let me hear the beats and shit. I always see producers looking for loops and some people looking for complete beats, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. really cool, man. Thanks. So y'all going out the way to go throw this flash drive on the stage and get it to him, man. man that's, I'm that's, telling you, that shows you something though. They doing it. They doing the most. I ain't gonna hold you. Um, one of my other questions: Who was the first artist you ever worked with? You know, I asked about the UFO one, but I don't think did you work with an artist at that point or no? Um, shit, outside of them, I'm trying to think. I was still living in my hometown at the time. I was working with just, like, local artists. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like, I, ain't, I don't even know who the first, first artist <laughs> I worked with. I don't even remember, bro. Uh, let's say first major one, then. First major artist? Mm-hmm. I would have to say Starlito. Okay. Yeah, he from Nashville, Tennessee. That's what's up. So, yeah, I definitely would have to say Starlito. That was uh, probably 2018 then, right? Before man, that was Dumber? probably like 2013. Wow. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been I've been on the scene doing shit for a long time. Mm-hmm. 20, 20, no, that was actually 2012 because that same year I had a single with French Montana. Mm-hmm. That was like my first major, major release. And then the following year I was on a Nipsey Hussle mixtape. Okay, you okay. Feel me? So. Dang, yeah, he Nipsey wasn't even a major hard. artist at the time, you feel me? Mm-hmm. But that's when he had that hundred dollar mixtape, Crenshaw. Yep. Yeah, he was on that. I remember that time. time. Everybody mm-hmm. was making like big news about that Man, I'm telling on you. social media. Yeah, he was on that motherfucker. I remember that. My cousin, he was talking about that too. He was like, "Yo, this guy just dropped. This guy from California just dropped a mixtape for a hundred dollars." Yeah, He's like, hundred dollar mixtape is crazy." Well, yeah, just being in uh, in Nashville, I was working with a lot of local artists from my hometown, Columbia, Tennessee, and mm-hmm. then. Being in Nashville, working with a lot of their local artists. And then, of course, some of their major artists as well. Jelly Roll, as of now. I don't know if you heard of him. I seen, he, I seen um, like they ran artists. into him at a Icebox or something mm-hmm. like that. I seen that. That's when I yeah. found out. Yeah, and then uh, Young Buck from, from the OG unit or whatever. Okay. I, I worked with him a lot. But Starlito, like the main, main big artist that, from there that I really worked with. Damn, that started out, you know what I'm saying? Wow. So, you, so what do you got to say? To artists that's like they want to get to where you're at but obviously it takes time because you're explaining this as it's like a 15 year process almost what it seems like <laughs> yeah. 17 years if i'm adding I mean, up shit, right you like really that. can't even put no time on it bro because mm-hmm. like i'm still going at the end of the day yep. you feel what i'm saying so it's just like i don't know is this really what you want bro you gotta do it you just know, stay consistent day. with it like regardless of whatever you're trying to do shit if you like to do interviews, mm-hmm. you're going to chase a nigga down till you get your interview. You feel me? So, and I mean, it is what it is, bro. No disrespect at all. Yeah. It's just, you know, if you persistent with your shit and that's what you want to do, you got to stay consistent with it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's fire, man. Sacrifices. And resilience, man. For sure. Um, What's one of your favorite songs you put out so far that you made a beat for? If you had to put like pick one. Or if one is hard, you could do a top three. Man, I can't do a type of <laughs> I like all of my shit, man. I ain't gonna hold you. I think music I just has different vibes for the time of when you're listening to it. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes it can I can do top three albums that I've been on. Okay. You feel me? Like, obviously, like, Yellow Tape, the first one, Dumb and Dumber one, and Rich Slay. Mm hmm. Yeah. For sure. Um, all them bitches go. Yeah, I was about to ask you about the plaque. That was my follow-up question, man. Uh, bitch is <laughs> that was my follow-up question. Rich life and be about plaques. <laughs> yeah. Even posting about plaques, like I felt like for a week it was almost like I seen a new plaque every day on Instagram. Dope. I was like, damn. It was though. It was so crazy. I ain't even like I was posting as they came, mm-hmm. bro. It wasn't like, yeah, I'm gonna post this one this day. Post this one this day. I wasn't even on that type <laughs> yeah. of time. I, I opened Instagram. They was just coming, bro, and I'm just like, oh yeah, I'm posting this shit. Uh-huh. Boom, boom. Yep. Shit, just bliss, bro. You Feel That's me. crazy, man. Do you know how many plaques you have in total now? Man, hell nah, but definitely over 30. For over sure. 30? For sure. You got a plaque room in your house? Nah, it's in my living room right now. <laughs> yeah. At that point, you could just make like a full collage of like. Yeah. Different... That's kind of how I get it going on my stairs. That's fire, man. Up the stairs? Yeah. That's fire. That's just like a recording studio or, you know, a record label 
like their offices and stuff like that. So yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get it up out of there though. You feel me? Yeah. <laughs> and kids. Oh yeah. Yeah, they break a plaque, man. That's something else. Yeah. That's like a trophy. Nah, for real. What was your feeling of getting your first plaque like? Man, it was lovely, man. Dog gave me my first play, man. Came in the studio, handed it to me like, yeah, huh? Big band, huh? Like that, you feel me? Handed it to me like <laughs> that's that. A, that's what he used to call hard, you? hard, bro. Big band. Yeah. Biz Ann. Yeah, Biz Ann, yeah. yeah. Biz Ann. That's crazy, uh-huh. man. <laughs> 30 Flax. Billboard producer, man. So. Um, Let me see what other topics we got. We talked about Rich Slave, Dumb and Dumber. Yellow tape. What mm-hmm. was the vibes like creating all of those? Because they all got different energy, different progress of where you were at as a producer too. So what was the feeling of those like as you went through them? Because you said you were young when yeah, and with the kids going up. back for so you weren't even at the first party. Mm-hmm. The other two, what was that like? Man, yellow tape. We did a lot of that in uh, a first European tour. Okay. Well, Glock first European tour, whatever. Um, we did a whole lot of that over there. So it, we it just it was just a different vibe all in all in all just because of where we were mm-hmm. and the time and where it was and shit like it. You feel me? And um, as far as like Rich Slave, that album really came out of nowhere. Dolph had already been working on it, but nobody knew about it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He was already in the studio, late late nights, early mornings type shit, but nobody even knew about it. He just I'm finna get ready to put out an album. Cause you know when dog get ready to do some shit, bro, he got a whole plot game plan and every whole rollout for what he finna do. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Dang. Hell yeah. What's but, your favorite um thing about being overseas, you think? Does it make you work harder, you think? Or is it just like more I laid feel, back? It's, it's just extra motivation, really, bro. Cause you over there just recognizing all those people. That you don't see every day, you know. You see Americans every day. Mm-hmm. This motherfucker gonna act like this motherfucker, but you don't. You don't see those type of people over there. So you don't. They you don't live the same lifestyle they live. Mm-hmm. So the the fact that music can bring all us to the same building, you yeah. feel me? And it being my music or Glock music, you feel what I'm saying? It's hard. You it know is. what I'm saying? It's a whole different level of motivation, especially when they out there saying this shit word for word. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Even let the band play. They yeah. saying that part. They you feel do. me? They so do. you feel me? It's just, it's just different. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Dang, man. Yeah, yeah. That's that's really crazy, man. Um, how many? What's the main difference you would say between U.S. and overseas, Canada, all the different countries at the tours? Is well, it just I, different? I, I ain't been to Canada yet, man. I'm finna get ready to go to Canada mm-hmm. though. They're doing the Canada tour. That's the first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, that's I thought you guys would have already went by now. Yeah, well, nah, that's we crazy. That bitch, but we going. But uh, as far as uh, America and 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 Europe, I mean, I mean, shit, it's just, I mean, I can't really explain. It's just Are different, they more bro. Uh, <laughs> I feel like they, yeah. I feel like they more diehard fans of the music, you mm-hmm. feel me, versus the artists, you yeah, feel yeah, me? Yeah. So they just coming for the music, the festivities, the the whole culture of the shit, mm-hmm. you feel me, versus, you know, America, you know, we over here, we going off of names and shit, mm-hmm. and if you ain't got no name no more, if you ain't popping your shit, they ain't popping, they ain't coming out no more. Yep. That's why you can still see these older artists go overseas and tour from their songs from the 80s. Yep, that's you true. You feel me? It's just they more like... Die hard, music. I feel like, you know what I'm saying? That is like a big thing in America. Like, people are more into riding a trend or a wave instead of actually the, the actual the shit. Art. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a yeah. crazy thing. Um, where we at? Favorite city for a tour? You have one of those? I always ask the guys that. Man, oh, probably. Shit. I ain't gonna front. This last tour we did, Chicago was like so turnt. Really? Chicago was so turnt. But then again, man, we was in Barcelona too. That shit was so fucking lit, bro. <laughs> and you know, they we they on a, a eight hour time difference from us. And the club we went to, Glock didn't have to be on stage at three in the morning, bro. The club didn't what? even open the one, fool. That's crazy. And I'm talking about, bro, it was so many fucking people, bro. Really? And we just like, man, where's all these people coming from? <laughs> they coming to Glock show. It was hard, bro. That's crazy. It was so hard, bro. bro Barcelona. Yeah. Barcelona, bro. That's it. Now, you're the first one to say that. A lot of guys say like, um, Alabama, they'll always I say Texas. Um, 
Barcelona, <laughs> bro. <laughs> Tell a nigga get you Barcelona now. <laughs> Fuck you talking about. Nigga talking about Alabama. You ain't got there yet. <laughs> you, ain't, <laughs> you ain't got there think, yet. People love New York, too. People Start love New York. Um, when are you guys coming back to Florida again? You guys are in their yellow tape. Yeah. That was the first time I got to see Ain't no telling, man. You feel me? Glad be bouncing around. Mm -hmm. And he only going to keep elevating as long as he putting out shit. So, you know. That's what's up. That's what's up. Um, Advice for artists and producers that you have coming up. Man, shit. Stay crazy. Keep creating, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Don't let nobody discourage you, bro. Just keep creating. Playing something. That's, yeah. what's up. that's hard. That's hard. Keep great. You got any other topics that you want to talk about as a producer? Uh, I've read through a pretty good list, I feel like, today. Yeah. I don't really, you know, I don't really be getting to all that producer talk shit. <laughs> the niggas be really crybabies at really. Why? Like, if be, you give your niggas, opinion on something? Nah, niggas just be on the internet crying and shit, man. <laughs> yeah, man, I ain't get my name on this beat. Nah, this old <laughs> shit. Like, it just be. It'd be too long beginning to all that shit, bro. I know there is I just made my music and stay out of the way, man. Mm -hmm. You feel me? I've seen some artists say they will make a, a producer take their tag off a beat. Yeah. Hey, Why do yeah. you think that is? I mean, it might not fit. It might not fit where it's at. I mean, I don't know. That's a crazy it's, thing. It's different reasons, right? Really. Hmm. I never yeah. understood that. I was like, dang, you got to That's like, like nigga ain't never told me that. And I ain't saying that just like on no cocky shit or nothing like it. Because if an artist be like, man, I'd rather not have a tag on that, I'd take it off. Shit, really? I'm still making the money. Yeah. I'm still going to still gonna be my shit. Mm -hmm. I ain't tripping. But I wouldn't take it as disrespect or nothing like it. But, you know. Yeah. That's just a different thing. Mm -hmm. I always, I've seen that before. You know, I like... Watch but that's why I be saying movies. niggas be crybabies too, bro. Yeah. You feel me? Because if you worry about your tag versus worry about the money and keep working more and more, nah, I don't want to. I don't want to sign off with it because my tag can't be on it. Mm -hmm. Well, all right, bye. Yeah, because they just gonna get a nigga to remake it anyway, and I'm that nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that nigga today. Call the label. Call be like, hey, yeah, we need you. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, but yeah, they for sure. Uh, what's what's some of the main labels you work with outside of Empire and Atlantic? Um, shit, really all the labels. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a I got an admin deal and shit with Sony. You oh, okay. feel me? So yeah, I've been with Sony since two, 2019, too. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So outside of them, shit, Warner, you know, all the labels work together, bro. Yeah. All of them They're coincide. All the same people you'd say, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It ain't, it ain't beefing like Death Row in the <laughs> 90s and Bad Boy. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't it ain't that type of shit. All these motherfuckers work together, bro, and everybody branched off to somebody. You feel me? Mm. So, yeah. That's what's up. I did notice that, like, as the more stuff I do, everybody knows somebody that knows that person mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So, yeah. networking is definitely a major thing when it comes to building your brand and whatever so, you got going on. Yeah, yeah, man. That's what's Just up. Just like like you, bro. Like we end up with each other, bro. I didn't see you three, four places, and didn't even know who you was. You yeah. feel me? Mm -hmm. You know, and just just good energy, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That was a that was a legendary day that day. I got a lot since I've been to that trip for sure. Yeah, it's yeah. given me a lot of opportunities and being able to get a lot of stuff done and grow to what I want to keep doing with my social media. But New York yeah. City, yeah, man. New York City, man. You guys gonna be back there again pretty soon, probably. Yeah, yeah. I ate my first child cheese that day up in my <laughs> I had never ate one. I, I thought, I really thought you they only made it like one way. I ain't know you can go in there and get it different ways mm -hmm. and shit like that. It's like Subway. Yeah, yeah. See, I ain't know that, bro. I <laughs> thought it was just, you go in there and order it and they make it one way. No. Nah, I don't like nah, all that because I, I ain't really no fan of cheese like it, bro. Mm -hmm. You hear me? So, nah. Did you go to that, um the one where the guy be putting all the random stuff in it? You know, like the Aki? Like, what's up? You ever see those videos? Oh, man, nah, I don't think I went out? to that one. Oh, okay. yeah, nah. I went to the one that was across the street from the venue. Oh, okay. That bitch was buzzing. <laughs> that was too buzzing. For real, that <laughs> was too buzzing. That's what's up, Dang, man. I was... That's what's up, man. <laughs> I'm trying to think of any other topics, man. I, I think I ran through a good amount today. Oh, Straight it was up. a pretty good interview. We can see what else we can get done today. Maybe you, you down to cook up something for a little short yeah, video yeah, after man. that? Yeah, show you some little shit. Okay, yeah, so... That's the band play interview, man. We yeah, glad yeah, we got to get this one in. Um, I'm sure we'll do another one in the future, a couple months or a year, or something like that. Yeah, yeah we'll pop out again, we'll follow up again, or see him at a show or something like that. But for sure. all y'all tapped in. Thank you guys for watching this one. Um, you know, see all the other guys that we did the interviews with, all the other artists, producers, <laughs> creatives, 
pretty much everybody that I'd be working with, man. It's, the list keeps growing as we go. But hey, band yeah. play, man, thank you for doing this one again today. Yeah, I don't know. And um, we're going to get to the next video. All right. What's up? Yeah, let's let it, we're going to let it play back now. Let the band play.